Okay, so this is going to be a quick video of the Word Excel integration extra credit. Um, so let's see if I can get this thing started. So first things first, I'm going to uh, click the uh, Word document here. Those are the directions. And that should open up in Word. And there's there it did. Next, I'm going to go ahead and click the uh, Excel. Um, well, this is the data for the Excel document, so I'm going to click that. It should open up in Word also. And there it is. So I'm going to select this information. I'm going to copy it. And I'm going to paste it into Excel. Let's see if I can get to Excel here. And I didn't get to Excel. That was odd. So now I did. Now I'm going to paste it. And there's all the information. I think I'll zoom in on that a little bit just to make it easier to see. So first things first, uh, well, let's go back to the directions, see if we can get to the directions here. I want to go to Word. And that's the data file, which I can now close that. Don't need it anymore. And here's the, here are the directions. So copy the data. Let me zoom in on this a little bit also. Copy the data, make a nice looking spreadsheet out of the data using the formatting tools, and then we're going to go do that. So I'm going to add another column over here. I know I'm going to, I'm going to need that, so I'm going to just put a percent heading on that. And I want a nice little uh, heading on the top here. So I'll select that first row, merge and center it. Um, make the font a little bigger, and maybe give the background a color of some sort. And I got another subheading here, so I'll merge and center that one, and make that font a little bigger, maybe make it bold, and give that one the same color. Um, this one, I think I will make that bold, too. I got, I've got these nice dates right across here. Let's see if uh, we can make those bold. Uh, ten point font, we can leave them at. I think I'll center those. We've got some nice labels down here on the left for the different types of broadband connection we're talking about. So I think I'll make those bold. And the column's not wide enough, so I'm going to drag that out and just double click. Oops, I double clicked and I got way wider than I wanted. I'll bring it right back to there. This text in this box we can hang on to because we're going to need that later, but I'm going to move it down so we can just get it out of the mix there. Oh, I think I forgot to bold my percent and center that also. So we got a bunch of numbers, and we haven't put any borders on this thing yet, but I'm going to, well, let's go back to the uh, word directions. It says, add a column to the far right that calculates each type of access as a percent of the total. Use only the last year of data for calculating the percents. Okay, the last year of data is the June year. So if I want to get a percent of the total, I need to get a total. So I'm going to put an auto sum in that cell right there. And there's my auto sum. Notice I got a different font, though. That was a little odd. So I've got Times New Roman there, and here I've got Calibri. So that was kind of strange. So I'm just going to click on that cell, hit my Format Painter, and click. Let's see, do we have, oh, look at that. we got Calibri over here. Oops, not there, but just in all these cells, we got Calibri also. So again, I'm going to select one of my cells, get the Format Painter, just drag down across those values. So I think I'll make this one bold. It's a total. Uh, I think I'll also put total in this cell for June of 04 and um, the font's wacky again format painter click that cell uh, I think I'm going to indent this cell a little bit so that it's shifted over closer to the number so I'm going to hit the indent button slide that over a little bit and maybe make that one bold too um, maybe unindent that tad there. Okay. So now I need the percent. So of course the percents are going to be the 
part, the partial, the partial value here for the DSL, divided by, of course, the total. And I'm going to fill that down, so I better make that absolute. So I got zero. Now, I got zero because this is a percent column, and I have neglected to format these as percent. So I better format that as percent. There we go. And you can give it one decimal place if you wanted to to just see what that looks like. So maybe I'll make those bold too so they stand out a little bit. And fill that down. And there are the various percents. Now that column doesn't need to be quite that wide. That's better. So at this point I can start putting some borders on this. So I think I'll put a box around the whole thing thing and I think I'll put a line across the bottom of that one a bottom border there that looks good and I think I'll just leave that the way it sits there I think I'll put a box border around that one uh, box border, box border, outside borders. And I think I will... I think I'll put a box border around all of that. And now I think I'll color... My heading is a slightly different color, just for fun here. Let's do... Uh, I'm just doing that. And then I'm going to do my headings out here on the left, that same color. Now, I might need right borders on these cells. Let's see what happens if I put right inside borders. Can I do a right inside border? If I just say right border, it's going to put them on there. And I don't want that. But I can draw a border. So I'll choose the draw border tool. And I want a, I want a border right there. And I want one there, 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 and there. One more. Okay, there's some borders for you. I'm thinking that's pretty good. One thing we could do to make the rows a little bit easier to read is we could color some of the rows a slightly different color. Um, so. I could color, oops, I didn't want to do that, control Z. I could color every other row that color that I just had, like so. I don't know. You know, it's all a matter of style, so it's kind of up to you. I don't, I don't know if I like that line underneath my heading right there. Now, there's that bottom border. I don't know if I like it. So... I can say erase border, get the little erase border tool, and I could just sort of click on that border. And I kind of like that a little bit better. Now, if I hit the print preview button, you can see how that looks. Now, because I'm not printing to a color printer, it's just doing the black and white, but I kind of like the way that looks. Okay, let's go back to our word and see what else we needed. So we're going to create a line chart showing the growth of the types of access over time. Okay. So here's ADSL, and it grew over time, these values. You don't want to select the percent column, so you got to be careful with that. So I select my headings and my data points, and I insert a line chart. So there's a line chart. And, okay, it looks like i got my data. All I need to do now is to dress up this chart a little bit. Well, there's a chart title missing. That's a problem, so I better go put a chart title in. So go to the layout ribbon, chart title, and put it above the chart. So this would be broadband usage, and it's from 1299 through 604. Enter. Okay, there's our title. Now these numbers are taking up a lot of room over here in this vertical axis. So you'll notice up here at the top left it says the vertical axis is selected and I can hit the format selection button. So format selection. And what I would like to do is I'd like to change the display units. Well, if you look at those numbers, you'll see that the numbers are millions. 
So if I go to display units and ch choose millions, it gets rid of those ginormous numbers. That looks a lot better. We've got the uh, legend over here. That legend is okay, but these dates are kind of mashed together here. Um, let's click on the horizontal axis and hit format selection. I don't know if we can reformat that, but if we go into the number format and say date, we could try month, day like that and just see what happens with that. And notice it didn't change them. It's not recognizing these as date. That's the problem. So that didn't do any good for us. But let's try something else. Let's go to format selection. We could do oh alignment. You know, I don't know, custom angle. I notice as soon as I do in the custom angle, notice how it changed down there. And I'm going the other way now. And okay, well that's a little different. So they all fit better so you can read them better that's kind of cool um, the next thing we could do is we could maybe give the background a little bit of a shade so I'm clicking on the chart area notice up here at the top left it says chart area selected format that selection and I could give it a uh, oh I like the border style with the rounded corners I like that a lot so I'll bump up that border so it's more visible um, change the fill. I could change the fill to, oh, I don't know, a gradient fill. That's that's kind of a nice gradient fill. I'll just leave that one. They've got some extra other ones in here that you could experiment with, or you could experiment with making your own gradient. And um, we've got this plot area. I could jazz up this plot area by going to my browser. Um, I'm just going to click on a browser real quickly and search for a modem so m-o-d-e-m and take a look at images of modems and I got a bunch of different images of modems so I could I could click on one that's a little fuzzy but that's all right and I can just copy that image so I'll copy that image I'll go back over click on my plot area and the plot area says format selection and so then I can go to fill picture or texture fill, hit the clipboard button, and there's a modem in the background. Well, I'm pretty happy with the way that looks without getting too carried away. You could put a little copyright down here at the bottom or something, but I, I kind of like what we've got. I think I'll stop with that. So I'll just slide that over here. Um, the next thing is, uh, let's go back to Word. So I'm doing Alt-Tab to get back. So it wants a pie chart showing the percents. Okay, so I'm going to get a pie chart now from my percents. So this is kind of in the way, so i got to get that out of the way there. Here are my percents, and I want the labels too, so i got to grab the labels. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, select the labels. So I just selected them normally. And now I'm going to hold the Control key down and click my percents. So I got them both selected, and then I'm going to go insert, and I'm going to insert a pie chart. And I'm just going to insert the standard pie chart. And there we go. Now you'll notice again I didn't get a title, so I go back to the layout menu. Pick chart title above chart, and I want the same title. So I'm just, I could copy and paste, but I'm not going to worry about it. So I'm just going to broad, oops, broad, if I can spell. Broadband usage, twelve ninety nine. Whoops, no, this is not twelve ninety nine. This is uh, June. So this is June of two thousand and four. Two thousand and four. So that's actually a little different title. So that looks all well and good, but again, we don't have anything on here for showing these percents. So we don't know what the percents are. So I want data labels. So I'll click data labels, and I want them on the outside end. So I click outside end, and you'll notice I, I got my percents. Um, sometimes you may not get percents, and so if you click on one of your data labels, you'll notice up here at the top left it says Series 1 Data Labels, and I can hit Format the Selection. And it opens up the dialog box, and I can say that I want... Oh, look at that. It kind of screwed up. It showed me percents, but those are really the values from the sheet. And so if I change it to percent, I'm just going to get the same thing. 
Um, notice I round it off a little bit, but I can turn off value. Either way you want to go here, you're going to get those percents because that's what the original values were. So I think I'll just leave it on values. And I've got my leader lines showing. Um, okay, I'm, I'm pretty good with that so far. But what I want to do is I want to move some of these around because you can't see the percents. They're all jamming up on each other. So I'll slide those around a little bit. And when I move them, the leader lines, of course, show up. And cable has more than anybody. So I'm going to click on this cable pie slice. I click once and it selects all the pie slices. I click a second time and I only get that one data point for the cable. And I can hit the format selection button. Um, fill, picture, texture, fill. It's still on the clipboard. I think I'll go ahead and, and leave that picture on the clipboard uh, where I have it. Um, but I don't have any border on that, so I'm going to go to border, um, solid line, and now you see there's a border there, so that shows that pie slice a little bit better. Uh, I think I'll just leave that. Um, these numbers on the pie here, I, I think I'd rather have those numbers um, bold. So I'm just going to go back to my home menu and hit the bold button. And, oh yeah, they stand out a little bit better now. Um, again, there's no background behind this, I mean, no, no uh, fill on this, so I think I'll just click on that chart and go to layout, and notice it says chart area, format selection, and again, I, I like my border styles to be round, I really like that. So I'm going to be consistent here, same border style, and then I think I'll be consistent on the same fill with a gradient fill, so that my charts look the same. Um, that's pretty good. You could you could put a border around the um, the legend. The words in my legend. Uh, I could make those bold. Maybe you know, hit bold. Now they stand out a little bit better. Also, if I, I go back to my layout, notice the legend is selection. I could say format that selection. I could put a, a border around that with a solid line border change the color maybe to something a little lighter just so that it doesn't stand out much but it's got a little bit of a border around it uh, pick one of these blues uh, just pick a blue here so there's my border and I'm pretty happy with my two charts and so at this point I, I think I'll move on here um, go to the website given with the data write a short paragraph using word summarize the first three paragraphs of the document and keep it short um, I think you can figure that part out. So they want you to actually create a Word document, though, so I, I need to do that. So I'm going to create a brand new Word document. And I would have three short paragraphs here. So, well, what did it exactly say? i got to go back and look at that. Um, oh, sorry. Getting a little bit distracted here. My neighbor offices are making a lot of noise. Um, using Word, summarize the first three paragraphs. Oh, one short paragraph is all you need for that, okay? So one short paragraph, I can say equals rand. Uh, I just want one paragraph and four sentences. So there's one short paragraph. Okay. Um, copy my formatted table of data from Excel into my Word document. Make the table fit and look professional. Um, okay, copying this as a graphic, as we talked in class, is probably the way to go. So the table is what they want me to copy, okay? Now, my, my graphics, my charts here are kind of in the way. I'm going to drag those down. Um, the table, I'm going to copy and paste this table as a graphic, but I want to turn off my grid lines. So I'm going to go to the View menu and turn off the grid lines, and let me click on the chart here. Okay, turn off grid lines. So View menu, tick the grid lines box. Then I'm going to select my table of data, and I'm going to copy that. I'm going to go back over to Word, and just hit an Enter just to get down one line there. And I'm going to go to the Home menu and drop the Paste menu down, and choose Paste Special. And I'm going to choose Picture right here. And there it is. And boy, does that ever look good. Looks just like it does in Excel. So that's, that's sweet. So the other directions, uh, copy the formatted table, copy and paste my two charts, and get everything to fit on one page.
Okay, so now I'm going to go back to Excel. I'm going to click on one of my charts here. There's my chart. And I'm going to copy that, go back over to my Word document, and I'm going to click down here, double click. I just double click down below my table. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to paste that, but I'm going to go to Paste Special and see my options. And I'm going to paste it just as a JPEG. We're familiar with JPEG. So I paste it as a JPEG, and there it is. It kind of pasted it in an awkward place. Um, and if I zoom out on this a little bit, you'll notice that I'm, I'm kind of running out of room on the page here. So I, I might need to adjust that a little bit. So I'm just going to shrink it down a little bit here. And so now it's smaller. I can also shrink the table down a little bit, you know, just so the table doesn't take up quite as much room. I can also center justify that table there on the page. I think it looks pretty centered. So I've, I've reduced the size of that chart. So I'm going to go back to Excel, click on my second chart, copy that, back to Word, and I'm just going to click over here somewhere and paste again. So paste special, and I want to pick the JPEG. And I just pasted it, and you're like, where? Okay, there it is. Just pasted it down below. So I'm going to drag that up here a little bit. Now, this one I made smaller. Uh, I can continue to make that a little bit smaller, I suppose. And this one, I need to make it smaller. So I'll shrink that down a little bit. So that's pretty good. And I'm fitting them down here on the page. That's cool. And I'm going to drag this one down. And, and notice, because the second one was pasted afterwards, it... It, uh, they overlap, but it overlaps in an area on the chart that didn't have anything, so that's okay. So there are those two stuck in there, and there's that. And Okay, and I've, and I've got my table of data. I'll slide that down a little bit more. All right, we're coming along here. And I'm back. I think I'm pretty much finished with the Excel sheet, except I do need that address. Whoops, didn't want to move that. I do need that address that I have parked here in this cell, so we'll remember that. So go back to the directions. Okay, add a footnote with the web address of your table data. Okay, a footnote. So go back over to Excel, grab that. I'm just copying that. Go back over to my Word document, and i got to add a footnote. Now, insert a footnote is under the References button tab. Insert footnote, and somebody just walked in my door. But Where's the insert footnote? Oh, I've got to click on the document. There's a big insert footnote button. I'll hit that and just paste. And I just pasted that in. I think I pasted a carriage return, so I got rid of the carriage return also. So I got that footnote in there. That's cool. And notice it put it right there at the beginning of my document. That's okay. I can live with that. Go back to my directions. Add a footer with my name on the left and the date on the right. Use the top border. Okay, a footer, name left, date right, top border. So I need to insert a footer. So I go insert footer and drop down, blank three column, put my name on the left, and the date on the right. I think it was date on the right. If it wasn't, you can figure that out. So just click date and time, insert a date, click OK. And I need a top border, which is on the Home tab. And um, go to the borders in the paragraph group. I want a top border. There's my top border. OK, so coming along here. Um, this graphic, I could, I could slide this graphic over a little bit. Got to get out of the footer. Slide that graphic over a little bit. Um, that's cool. OK, now I'll go back to my directions. Make sure the margins are 0.8 inches all the way around. All right, so I go to page layout. Oh, I've got to get out of my picture there. Hit the page setup button. 0.8 all the way around. 0.8, tab, 0.8, tab, 0.8, tab, 0.8, and click OK. I got 0.8 all the way around. And things shifted a little bit. Notice when I did that. So I'm going to grab that image, shove it over a little bit there. Take this image, shove it a little bit over. OK. My table is not really centered on the page there. I wonder if I hit the center justify it. No, it didn't center it. OK, let's just move that over ourselves. All right, so we're coming along here. Make sure the margins, put a nice title at the top, larger font size. Find the same dog cartoon on the internet and put it on the left of your title, similar to this document. Left of the title. OK, 
kind of similar to this document. So this dog cartoon, you got to search for that. All righty. I don't want you to copy my dog cartoon. I want you to find one. Put a footnote in your title with a web address of the dog picture. So if I just go to my browser, I'm just in my browser now, and I'm going to search for the dog on the Internet. Dog on the Internet. Um, you get a dozen different dogs on the Internet, and you, of course, will probably find the one I'm looking for, and I'm just going to right-click that, and I'm going to copy the image, and then I'm going to pop back over to my document, and right at the top, I'm going to paste that image. There it is. Go to the Format menu. I want Wrap Text, Type, and notice my text wrapped around. And then I'm going to go up there, and I just hit an Enter, um, but I, I just needed to get up here so I could type my title. So high speed, high speed data line usage. There's a title for you. And I select that, and I got the picture too and everything else. I didn't want to do that. Right after that usage, I'm just going to hit an enter and see if, OK. Now let's just see what happens if I make this bold and bigger. I don't want anything else to get bold and bigger. That's cool. I'm going to center justify that. Now, do I want the title on top of the text and the graphic up there? Well, what if I just slide that graphic up? OK, that's cool. That's looking pretty good. And my graphics, uh, whoops, see, because I put more on the page, my graphics are now kind of onky tonky. And I got to shift things around a little bit and do some adjusting. Now, to get this graphic so that it's actually on the page, notice I had to cover up some of this graphic. So I've got to make things smaller. So I'm going to just do some adjusting of my images here, make things a little smaller. Now I can shift this one back over. And I still have some overlap, but that's OK. I didn't lose any information. Looking pretty good. Looking pretty good. Um, let's see, where are my directions? There we go. Nice to add a header with the CLCC on the left and CIS 120 on the right. Use a bottom border. Put a single line border around the entire document. OK, so all I got to do now is put a header on here. So I'll go into Insert, Header, Three Column Layout. I forget what I was supposed to put in the header. COCC on the left, 120 on the right. OK. COCC, click the center thing and delete it. CIS 120 on the right. And I want a bottom border on that whole thing. So I go to the home ribbon, paragraph group, bottom border. And I want a page border around the whole page. Now, many of you maybe have not done that, but if you go to page layout, there's a page borders button. And I just want a box border around the whole page. And I want the skinniest one I got there. You can do something else if you want to. There's a page border. All right, there we go. I think I got it. Let's take a look at that in page view mode. And there she be. Looking good. I'm going to stop.